Now, for more on the Nigerian presidential election, TRT World researcher Abdinod Dahir joins us now in the studio. Great to have you here, Abdinod. Now, we always hear this is Africa's uh, biggest economy, the most populous uh, country. Um, but really, what's at stake for ordinary people here? Thank you, Maria, for having me here. Now, the biggest stake here is the economy. Nigeria's economy has been suffering a lot for the last uh, five years. There has been a recession in 2016. And now uh, there is a lot of unemployment. More than 20 million of the people, most of them are young people, are unemployed and cannot find a proper job. And also uh, uh, insecurity has been there, you know, Boko Haram, the Al-Qaeda or uh, Daesh affiliate group has killed more than uh, 20,000 people since 2009 and displaced around 4 million people. And also corruption is, is, is you know, you mm -hmm. told Nigeria is Africa's largest economy in terms of because they have large oil, but the proceeds from that oil has been corrupted and, uh, you know, this has been, so people now want security, they want uh, corruption to be tackled, they, they want uh, t the economy to be improved, as well as, you know, for, for development of the country. Many issues that you've uh, pointed out there, Abdinora. I just want to pick up on uh, the first one, unemployment. Um, the average age of the people in Nigeria is 18 years old, but they're here voting for two people who are in their 70s. Just how representative are these two? of the 18-year-olds? That's a very good question. Now, one of the points that has been discussed here that people in Nigeria say, like, these two uh, leaders, they are more than, like, 73 uh, uh, and presidential candidates, but the real contest is between Buhari, the incumbent president, as well as Abu, uh, Abu Bakr Atiku, who was former vice president, as well as a business tycoon. But both of them, uh, in the 70s, they were born before the country's independence in 1960, and they don't represent the young population, more than 70% of the people in Nigeria are under the 35 years of, of age, and that means they're young people. So now they're between two devils, you know, to, to, so, but, and I can say like this time, like more than 20 million of Nigerian people has never seen, are uh, electing or, or participating in the election now, have never seen Nigeria without democracy. Nigeria started democratic transition 20 years ago. So now the people who are electing government are young people, and, you know, they find uh, uh, very difficult to elect old guard. Um, okay, and, and out of these two, who's the favorite to win? Now, if you look at the, the, the narrative, is there's no f favorite to win, but the most important issue here is that the post competitors are from the north, Muslim majority uh, regions. Why? So, you know, this will be a very tough competition between two Muslims from the majority Muslim regions. Uh, so, but, you know, there's no favorite at the moment. Buhari has been a former dictator, military general. Later on, he, he, he became a president in 2015 when he, elect, when he defeated uh, uh, Good Luck Jonathan. And that was the first time an opposition leader defeated an uh, incumbent leader in, 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 in Nigeria. So now, Atiku may be a president because there's not a new, because uh, uh, Buhari has also defeated his, his predecessor. But now, if you can look, the, the, you know, people has less hopes. But whoever wins, no matter if Buhari comes out or Atiku, he, ha the, he has to face these challenges, insecurity, corruption, economy, as well as the difference or, or between Muslim majority in the north and Christian majority in the south. Huge challenges uh, there in Nigeria for whoever wins. Thank you very much for your analysis. That was uh, Abdinor Dahir, TRT World.